taking on the Kings tomorrow night. Coach, welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me on. Well, what a difference a year makes for you guys on the road in particular. Your home record is the same right now as it is on the road. And and I know it's been documented numerous times, 11 road wins all of last year. What has been the main key to this road success so far this year? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know if we if we have an answer as to why we've been successful. I think, uh, you know, I think one of the things that Coach Stotts talked about at the beginning of the year was that we had to get off the better starts in games. And, uh we had to beat the teams that we're supposed to beat, and we had to have uh, a better record on the road. And I think uh, our guys took that to heart. And uh, I, I don't know if there's a, a better focus or an attitude that we have to prove something when we play away games down, but we just seem to be uh, have a little bit more fight than we did last year at this time and a little bit more confidence as well. And I think that comes with uh, our maturity as a team. Coach, I want to ask you a question about this team's offense. It, it's fun to watch, uh, and, you know, I have a chance in the huddle to hear Coach Stiles talk about flow and how important it is for this team to get into flow. But it's been interesting to me to observe, and I've seen the observer more when you guys were on the road, that no team has been able to interrupt this team's offensive flow. Even on nights that, that the Blazers miss shots, they don't have a problem getting the type of shot. You guys don't have a problem getting the type of shot you want. What has been the key to being able to, to have such an offensive flow and rhythm thus far in the season? Well, I think, number one, I think uh, you have to credit the offense. I think, uh, you know, Coach Stotts lets these guys play. It's not like he is uh, demanding as far as calling plays. He lets them run into what we call flow, which is basically freelance. Set a screen and uh, spread the floor, keep the floor spread. Uh, if, if we get a rebound and we can push the ball, that's what we're, we're looking to do. The second thing is I think we have excellent sets. So if we do set up, something that uh, we're going to be pretty much guaranteed a good look. And I think the most important thing of all three things, uh, and the third thing I'll mention, is that uh, we have a lot of players that know each other better after going through what we went through last year, and they're playing extremely unselfish basketball. They're not afraid to make the extra pass. Uh, we're one of the best passing teams in the NBA uh, as far as assists per field goal, and I think that that comes from uh, our guys willing to give up a shot to give one of their teammates a better shot. Coach, as a follow-up to that question, and, and thanks for breaking that down for, for me and our viewers, uh, is teams that have the type of offensive success that this Trailblazer team is having generally get offense off their defense. This team is able to get offense just off of its flow and its commitment to offense. So on the defensive end, what how would you identify this team's personality and focus on that end of the floor? Well, I think that we've shown so far this year that when we need to play good defense, that's when we do it. And I think that's what's uh, allowed us to come back in games when we've been down. It allows us to have a very good defense in the fourth quarter uh, when we know the game's on the line. Uh, and, uh, you know, our, our challenge with our players is to try to convince them to play like that for 48 minutes. It's, it's tough to do. Uh, I, I do believe, though, that our offense is better when we do play good defense. I think that, uh, um, you know, our flow offense and our transition, and I wouldn't say we're – uh, you know, shoot it up within seven-second type team. But if we can get into flow and we don't have to take the ball out of bounds, it, it promotes uh, it promotes better movement as far as our open court and, and how we move the basketball. So, you know, I think that, uh, you know, when we do play good defense, I think that our offense is even better than, uh, than if we have to take the ball out of bounds. Blazers assistant coach Jay Triano joining us here on Trailblazers courtside. Coach uh, Nick Batum fracturing a finger the other night and going to play with a splint on it, I'm told, for about the next six weeks or until it fully heals. But uh, we'll play with that on. Imagine there's going to be a little bit of adjusting that needs to be taking place. How did he look out there at practice today, and uh, how are his spirits right now? His spirits were pretty good, and, uh, you know, he did a lot of things one-handed in practice today, you know, just making sure that he didn't get a bump or didn't get a uh, band again. And I think every day it's probably going to get a little bit better. But, you know, he's got nine that are really good. He's got nine <laughs> fingers that work perfectly. So, you know, we can't use one finger as an excuse. And, uh, and I'm sure that's the way Nick's going to approach it as well. Hey, it happened to me one time during a basketball game, a pickup game, and this is just a quick short story. But the ball hit my left middle ring finger here, or my ring finger here on my left hand, and it popped so loud it sounded like an M80. And I looked down, and just like Nick did the other night, and it was over yeah. my pinky. And I had to have three pins put in it and had the taco shell wrapping on it. It's no picnic when you break a finger. I know that. No, it's not. <laughs> and, and, and I joke about the other nine being good. Yeah, right. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, the fact that it is the same finger on Nick and it's on his left hand and uh, – you know, he makes most of his plays with his right hand. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure other teams are going to work on that, too. They're going to make him go to his left like Philadelphia did the other night. 
And um, but Nick's been, you know, he struggled scoring the other night, but he still finds a way to get, you know, ten rebounds. He still finds a way to get ten assists when he struggled. So he's been very helpful. To us. Hey. And, uh, you know, hopefully he's good tomorrow. A lot of guys deserving certainly to be on that all-star team in just over five weeks from now. Certainly L.A. is one of those guys. Kobe Bryant came out and uh, basically said, look, let's not give the votes to me. Give them to Damian Lillard. Give them to some of these younger guys right now. And the West is down a couple of key point guards, as you well know, Russell Westbrook and CP3 yeah. down. The likelihood of Damian getting onto that West all-star team, I mean, obviously everyone oh. here in Portland would say he's certainly deserving. Yeah. I think the, I think the the key thing is that if we keep winning, how can you keep them off? Uh, and I think that uh, our, all of our players feel that way. That, that the more games that we win, the more uh, recognition we're going to get, not only as a team but as individuals. Um, I think, uh, and I really I really commend Kobe for saying what he said because I think that uh, having the fans vote, and we've seen it in years past when a guy like Yao Ming hasn't played and still is the leading vote getter. Uh, guys like Kobe who have struggled when they've played this year and been injured for most of the year are still leading in, as far as votes go. And I, you know, I, I don't like that. I mean, the fans want to see who they want to see, but I, I credit a guy like Kobe for standing up and saying, hey, vote for somebody else, vote for... And, I, and, you know, I think he's probably just saying, vote for anybody else, don't vote for me. And, and the first name that came to his mind is Damian Lillard, and I think that's the credit to Damian right there. Yeah, that's a very admirable thing for Kobe to do as well. Does the message uh, with the schedule right now, and you guys know that you're amongst uh, a stretch of games here, six, if I'm not mistaken, of against sub-500 teams, before you go out on that Texas trip and then finish it up in OKC, do guys look at the schedule? Do they know where they stand? And uh, if so, how do they handle it? it I, I know from talking yeah. to the players, they always just say, look, it's – the f next game that's in front of us that's all we yeah. focus on right i mean that, and that, that's true it is the next game i think that you plan long term and you you tend to look ahead a little bit but if you get caught doing that too much and you start looking at groups of games or two games two and three down the road that's when you get stung and uh you know we got stung the other night by a, by a philadelphia team that has uh, been on a nice roll out here playing in the west Co conference teams and I, I just think that you know you got to play them one at a time and um you know, some teams are really starting to turn things around. Uh, this is a funny time of year. Uh, before the All-Star break and it's after the holidays, uh, we're seeing a big change as far as what some teams, the Knicks and the Nets are starting to win games. And teams, Philadelphia is starting to win games. Teams that did not start off well are starting to get in the groove. And we got to make sure that we maintain the same groove that we've been in uh, from the start of the season. Yeah, it seems like there's a whole lot of parity that is uh, brewing right now in the NBA. Coach, uh, finally, want to ask you just about uh, the emergence of Robin Lopez because I think that this guy right now, he has been better than everyone initially thought. Has he been better than even you and the coaching staff thought, or is he kind of as advertised? Is he what you thought you were getting? Well, I wasn't really sure. I mean, I think as a player, you play against him and you don't, you don't know what he's like, but I think that his personality and his fiery – fiery uh, competitiveness are, are things that I didn't expect. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's got great basketball intelligence. He's obviously been brought up playing the game and understanding the game. He knows what he can do. And I think that uh, when you have players that understand their restrictions and what they can and can't do, uh, accept their role, doesn't demand the ball, I think it's a perfect fit for this team because we've got a lot of guys. Uh, the other four guys that he starts with can all find ways to score. And, uh, he does a lot of the dirty work, the setting of the screens, the keeping balls alive on the offensive glass and being the, the key defender that protects the rim for us. So uh, his, his role is very, very valuable to us, and he has been better than, than I thought he would be. All right, there you go. Assistant Coach Jay Triano joining us from Sacramento. Coach, thanks for the time. Go get us a win tomorrow, and we'll uh, see you guys back here on uh, Wednesday when you take on Orlando. Sounds good. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Assistant Coach Jay Triano joining us here on Trailblazers.